Mini Countryman Cooper S. E. All for review. Minnie's famously youthful, urban dwelling customer base would lap up the chance to buy an electric car, you'd imagine, and before too long, they'll be able to do just that. The firm has been experimenting with an electric-only model since it introduced a fleet of 600 prototype Mini E Super Minis onto European roads in 2009. We drove one from Brighton to Glasgow in 2010, just to prove it could be done, although it took fully 96 hours, in the days before motorway fast chargers existed. In 2019, Mini will launch its first all-electric series production model, a car the firm's management is already describing as its fifth superhero after the standard three- and five-door Super Mini, the convertible, the clubman and the countryman. Time will tell how great its superpowers will be, but the word is that they'll be delivered by breakthrough battery technology. And for now, Mini is getting its owners, dealers and devotee fans used to the idea of an electrified option with the subject of this road test, the Countryman Cooper SE All-4 Plug-in Hybrid. A medium-sized five-door hatchback ready to compete with the likes of the Volkswagen Golf GTE, Audi A3 e-tron Spartback, Toyota Prius plug-in and Hyundai Ioniq plug-in, the Countryman Cooper SE All-4 differs from its key rivals by having a slightly raised crossover style ride height and seating position, and also by backing that up with the extra capability of four driven wheels. The Mini's appeal plainly attempts to be broader than that of many of the fledgling affordable plug-in hybrids, also known as FEVs. Mini claims three-figure fuel efficiency at one corner, sub 7.0 seconds to 62 miles per hour performance zest at the other, a smattering of traditional 4x4 capability, and the company's fashion brand desirability to attract your attention. Such a challenging brief won't have been easy to fulfill, of course, and may have made it impossible for the countrymen to excel in any one area. We'll see. It's certainly true that this car differs from the mechanical template of those predominantly front-wheel drive competitors in ways that we'll go on to explain and that have influences on its performance and handling both to praise and lament. Mini Countryman Cooper SE All for Design and Styling like the related BMW 225's Active Tour plug-in hybrid, the Countryman Cooper SE All-4 differs from most of its direct plug-in rivals by having an electric rear axle. A Golf GTE sandwiches its electric drive motor immediately between its internal combustion engine and transmission, driving exclusively through the front wheels, and the Prius plug-in does something not too dissimilar. The Mini though, adds a rear-mounted 87 bhp, 122 pounds-foot electric motor and a nearby 7.6 kilowatt-hours lithium-ion drive battery to the mechanical makeup of a front-driven, automatic-equipped 1.5-liter Countryman Cooper. The hybrid motor and transmission in question are supplied by GKN Driveline, with whom BMW worked with for the i8 hybrid supercar and with whom Mitsubishi partners for the Outlander FEV and Volvo for the V60, XC60 and XC90 FEVs, all of those Volvos have separate electric rear axles, too. The technical solution gives this mini four-wheel drive and because the electric motor drives the rear wheels through a single transmission ratio, you can simply add up the electric oomph supplied by that synchronous motor and the 134 bhp and 162 pounds foot of the combustion engine to arrive at the total system outputs of the car, 221 bhp and 284 pounds foot. A hefty watt of that torque is available from stationary. On paper, that's almost as much power and quite a bit more torque than even the more expensive Countryman JCW has. But the drawback of a separate electric rear axle is weight. Although its generous and accessible torque might well cover it up at times, this Mini is almost 200 kg heavier than a Golf GTE. On Millbrook scales it weighed in at 1,753 kg, a figure worn by any Mini about as comfortably as steel toe cap safety boots on a jump jockey. 3850cc Morris Mini Miners would weigh less. 
Combine the notion of that curb weight with the higher than average center of gravity of the countryman and you wonder, before you've driven the car, if any compact hatchback from a brand like Mini could recover from such a dynamic handicap and deliver against expectations. Mini Countryman Cooper SE All 4 Interior We are now well into the maturing adolescence of the plug-in hybrid. The days when it might have been acceptable to find significant compromise to passenger or cargo space in return for a partly electrified power train, when these cars were built on older, adapted platforms rather than new, purpose-built ones, are now gone. The Countryman Cooper SE All 4 asks for only a few small and quite palatable sacrifices on the altar of technological complexity. So while the regular Countryman makes a practical and quite unusual alternative to a normal family five-door, this one does, too. You lose 10% of the boot's volume, 450 liters falls to 405, but the space is still about as large as most medium-sized five-doors have. The back seats are mounted slightly higher than in other Calentrymans and the option to make those seats slide fore and aft to trade leg room for boot space is no more. Here, as with headroom, what the Cooper SE All 4 leaves you with is still perfectly respectable by class standards. Ahead of the driver is a fascia that's little different from any other in the Countryman range. The cord carbon part leather trim of our test car lifted its ambience a little above that of the Cooper D we tested, but it's not exclusive to the hybrid. Just as we reported before, the car's material richness and quality, which is good enough to distinguish a premium Super Mini well enough, is a bit less impressive than its rivals but, on the whole, the driving environment is comfortable, spacious, pleasant and characterful. Where other plug-in hybrids include special digital instruments as standard, helping you to get the most out of that complex duo of motors, the Mini only swaps the irritatingly small analog rev counter for an equally irritatingly small power meter that illuminates with a separate gauge to show available electric torque when it's running in EV mode. If the controls and modes were less intuitive to use, the problem would be much more frustrating. Mini's latest navigation system Excel impressed us when we road tested the standard Countryman. It comes as part of the car's optional 950 pounds media pack and increases the size of your color display from 6.5 into 8.8 inches. All Cooper SS come with navigation and a DAB radio, but paying for the upgrade gets you touchscreen control, 20 gigabytes of onboard music storage and Mini's connected Excel option as well. The navigation system is a good one, being easy to program and to follow and clear in its mapping. Our car did without the Harman Kardon Hi-Fi upgrade, but its audio system still sounded powerful and crisp. But our main disappointment is with the car's instrumentation, which has to be lumped into this verdict when so many rivals offer customizable digital dials. The Mini's conventional dials don't include a rev counter and have only a rudimentary indication of available electrical torque. Compared with what you can get in a Volkswagen Golf GTE, for example, the dials make the car harder to drive than it need be. Mini Countryman Cooper SE All 4 Performance In its own intriguing and conditional way, the Countryman Cooper SE All 4 is a fast and compelling car to drive. Your sense of that begins to coalesce the first time you engage sport mode and use more than half of the accelerator pedals travel to urge the car on from low speeds. That directly driven electric rear axle certainly makes the most of the dynamic virtue on which any EVs or FEVs driving experience depends for dramatic appeal, instant and thrusting throttle response. Unlike some of its rivals, the Mini doesn't need a fraction of a second to decide if it's in the right gear or to overcome the inertia and friction of a conventional driveline, to make a meaningful difference to your rate of progress. Before your right foot has so much as reached all the way to the floor, the car is off, and if it's locked in a higher gear at fairly low revs, it will be accelerating quite a bit more forcefully than you'd think possible. Forcefully, but strangely serenely, at least until the combustion engine's revs hit a certain level. 
that the car hits 60 miles per hour from rest in 6.7 seconds proves that it's almost as fast over that benchmark as a like-for-like -like hot hatch and faster than many from 30 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour in gear, 7.5 seconds, fourth gear. But the pity is that paints a distorted picture of the Mini's outright pace in the broadest terms. Where a similarly priced hot hatchback would still feel quick when accelerating at motorway speeds, as would a Golf GTE, whose electric motor has the benefit of a gearbox to drive through, the Mini's electric motor has to shut down above 78 miles per hour at that point, at least in accelerative terms. This becomes a heavy and quite slow 134 bhp mini. In more everyday circumstances, the powertrain operates with polished smoothness. In auto e-drive mode, it'll keep the combustion engine shut down unless you ask for more power than you're likely need amid the flow of urban traffic, up to 50 miles per hour. In a maxi drive mode, it'll run electrically up to 78 miles per hour unless your foot hits the kickdown switch at the foot of the accelerator pedal or until you deplete the battery charge almost completely. In a maxi drive, the car is powerful enough for everything but demanding motorway use or for a road overtaking. There's a save mode too, allowing you to store up electrical charge for later, and if you program a route into the sat-nav and use auto e-drive mode. The car will even manage the charging and discharging of its drive battery to best suit the sorts of roads on which you'll be traveling. As a short-range EV, then, as well as a nicely balanced, very responsive, very drivable and easy-to-use hybrid, the Countryman Cooper SE All 4 is accomplished and impressive, as a driver's car, it's a decidedly mixed bag. Mini Countryman Cooper SE All 4 Ride and Handling the Countryman Cooper SE All 4 comes with 17 in wheels and low rolling resistance Bridgestone tires as standard, and few savvy owners will be minded to upgrade either since doing so will shift its CO2 derived benefit in kind tax liability up by 4%, worth £500 a year to a 40% company car taxpayer. Our test car was equipped with those standard wheels and tires and, predictably enough, it was without the outright grip level and the handling precision that a keener driver or a mini brand regular might hope for from it. The car's dynamic repertoire isn't all bad news, though. The extra weight in the back works quite well to soften the slightly touchy, overly firm ride that we've reported on with other Countryman models tested previously, while the softer, dollar tire sidewalls of the FEV's running chassis make for a quieter calmer and more absorptive secondary ride than on a run-flat equipped, bigger-rimmed Countryman. It's worth noting, too, that the plug-in hybrid's weight distribution is unusually well-balanced for a compact hatchback. All that really makes the car do, of course, is to slip with almost equal meekness from both the front and rear ends when you attempt to corner quickly. The car turns in with many typical directness but rolls harder than you expect it to and takes a long time to settle on its outside rear wheel. It then surrenders to understeer with little provocation. You have to disengage the stability control system to reach that point, mind, the system masks the chassis' apparent want for mechanical adhesion very cleverly, keeping the car online and stopping you from pouring on too much torque when it's active. In dry conditions, the handling seems game and direct enough at first, although ultimately underwhelming. It's very competent and stable, governed cleverly and watchfully by a fast-acting and proactive stability control system. But the initial bite you get from the steering isn't ultimately matched to the outright body control and keen adhesion level you're expecting. In wet conditions on the Millbrook Hill route, road holding was slightly precarious, although its handling security was ultimately guaranteed with the electronics on. Turn them off and, if you try to drive the car briskly, it can break away quite readily from either axle. It does so progressively, though, and its limits are fairly clearly marked. Look to the 70 to 0 miles per hour braking figure we recorded for objective evidence of that make hold on the tarmac. Even though it was in moderately heavy rain, a 61.2 meters stopping distance is poor, is poor.